Hi, this is Nikki Woods, and we're going beyond the studio with the incomparable Patty Austin on BlackAmericaWeb.com. Good morning. Good morning. We're flying very high. <laughs> She's like, is this seat taken? We're on the plane. That's right. I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. Why? <laughs> Instead of some grumpy old businessman, <laughs> like I usually yeah, have to sit next to. Oh, you know, I think after, um, I mean, I, I've seen your interviews, and, you know, I've, I've, I'm familiar with your music, but I think the first thing that I've noticed today, or the one thing that I've learned today, mm -hmm. is that you are truly an entertainer. That I'm truly crazy? Off. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or that. <laughs> you're truly out of your mind. Yes. But on and off the stage. Yeah, well, you know what? And I, I just realized this recently. Um, I was really lucky because I started in this business when I was four years old. And at that time, the people who were the stars in this business were really the innovators mm -hmm. of everything that came after. It was, it was a, an amazing time. But when, you know, when you're in it, you don't realize that. You have to get some perspective. And all of those people were my teachers, the Sammy Davis Juniors, the Quincy Joneses, the Dinah Washington was my godmother, Quincy's my godfather, uh, had uh, Heinz, Heinz and Dad, that's Gregory Heinz. You know, all of those people had tremendous influence on me. Ray Bolger, Judy Garland, and, and they kind of set the standard for what one does when you get on stage and what you, how you conduct yourself when you're off stage. And it's, it was all about entertainment at that point. Um, a lot of times I work overseas and, and they always have on the form that you fill out to get a working visa, what do you do? And I always put entertainer. I never put singer because I, hopefully I, I do more than sing. And when people uh, come to see me live, they're going to get a show, an all-encompassing show with, with humor and, and fun. And you have to put yourself out there if you're going to perform. And it's kind of a different standard to work by than the one that exists now. You know, there's a whole different way that people perform on stage now than, than the way they used to. So did you ever think of delving into different areas like movies or Broadway? Well, I've pretty theater? much done everything. I started out in theater. The first show that I did when I was a little girl was a show called Lost in the Stars, which is about apartheid in South Africa. And really? Yeah. And then I did Finian's Rainbow on Broadway. And uh, I did Free and Easy in Europe. And um, so I did a lot of theater. I, did, uh, re I replaced Nell Carter and Ain't Miss Behaven many years ago. All, all of the theater, most of the theater I did, I did when I was a kid. Um, and I've done TV for years. Since I was four years old, I did a TV series, a local TV show in New York called Star Time that uh, Connie Francis was on playing accordion, and Bobby Darren was singing on it, and I was singing on it, and Bernadette wow. Peters was singing on it. Wow. And um, that was a local New York show. And then I did a nationally broadcast show called Washington Square that was uh, hosted by Ray, Ray Bolger, who played the, uh, what was he, the Tin Man or the know. Scarecrow? <laughs> he was the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> don't be talking about his before your time. I know you've seen The Wizard of Oz. Don't even I try. I'm going to talk about The Wiz now. I know now. it was like right there. Yeah. Oh God. But I guess. <laughs> Make me feel 100, why don't you? Good I Lord. guess with like the rash of, of I guess, child actors that grow up and have so many problems yeah. and people say it's because they started in the business so young and they never really had a normal life and they weren't grounded right. what kept you so grounded or do you feel that you were well i never got it? that huge as a kid i was kind of like a working artist but not like a mega star which will make you crazy no matter what age you are mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and um and i had uh, tremendous amazing brilliant fabulous hip parents who would only let me work enough. They kind of made performing for me uh, a reward. It was my reward for being a normal person. Uh, the very first time my talent was discovered and um, Sammy Davis Jr. wanted me to perform with him, uh, my parents said, okay, you can do this if, and the if was, you continue to make up your bed every morning, you wash the dishes at night, and you're gonna go to school. And so you can work on the weekends and you can work uh, in the summer. And wow. they kept it that way until I was uh, 18 years old. And th that was the way I worked. And so I always had this, uh, I always led a dual life. And also at the time that I was performing on TV, the techno the people were not as technologically savvy as they are now. So I was literally on TV every Sunday. And I would go, and I went to public school in Bayshore, Long Island, did the TV show in Manhattan. And my friends would never put it together that I was the same person. <laughs> 
because people couldn't even figure out where the hell TV came from, right, right. Never, let alone that you would be sitting next to somebody that had been on it the day before. So they would just kind of go like, hi. And nobody really knew that I was in the entertainment business until I was about 15 years old. I made a record called Family Tree, and it became, in those days, you could actually have a local hit record. Right. And it became a local hit, and that's when a lot of my, well, everybody found out that I was a singer because I didn't go around saying, I'm a, you know, I'm a singer. I, that wasn't how I functioned. I, I was a cheerleader. I, you know, I was participated in all the school activities. Right. I didn't tell people that I was in the business. So, but now you've kind of, I guess, brought that full circle, all this solid education and, and upbringing that you've had, and now you're giving back to children Trying to. through music. Trying Tell to. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm, I've been working with a lot of kids. Actually, I started, oh gosh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I was asked to participate at uh, Berkeley in Boston at their music school with their vocal department and do some master classes. And that kind of, I got the bug from doing that. And I was a little bit nervous about it, but it turned out to be, I'm sure, more fun for me than it was for the, <laughs> for the students at the time. And Get out of the house. Huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> An opportunity to tell young people what to do. Oh, how exciting. So um, it, it, I just, I really enjoyed it. And then I started doing more and more and, and, and really getting involved in what's going on uh, with the educational system. And as I saw music being sucked out of the school system every time the budgetary cuts would happen, that's the first place they would start cutting. Um, I really became even more passionate about getting the message out about how we need to keep music, at least in our kids' hearts. It really, sadly, we're at a place now where we can't count on anybody but ourselves right. to make sure that our children have that influence in their life, right. even if they're not going to be musicians. And I tell this to my kids all the time. I always start my classes out as saying to them, how many of you want to be stars and famous? And usually most of them raise their hands. And, and, and I say, okay, then you need to leave this class because this is not about any of that. This is about loving music and making music. And if you do that, you're already a star and you're, you're already famous in the most important place you need to be. That's within yourself. And, and so kids kind of look at me like, because this generation is all about you know instant fame, instant success. What do you mean I gotta work to make this happen? Right. And so I'm very much about trying to create that work ethic and make kids understand that if you love music and you're involved in it, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna have a career in it. But you're gonna have that to carry with you for your whole life. And music is so powerful. Music can make you happy, it can make you sad, it can help you celebrate, it, it can help you speak to things that, that you can't otherwise express. Mm -hmm. And it's just a tremendous way, it's a healing bomb, it's a soothing bomb, it's a tremendous way to live your life, to have music in it, in some integrated, interwoven into your existence and so wow. I'm not just trying to teach kids how to you know go on American Idol and and be discovered I'm trying to teach them how to discover music so they can help discover themselves Wow how powerful and also powerful because yeah. I mean, we've seen the very very uh, calm <laughs> Patty Austin but you have got to check out the in-studio jam where she sings Baby Come to Me and she plays both parts. <laughs> she does That's a very right. believable James Ingram. In the Ingram. role of James Ingram today. <laughs> the role of James Ingram will be played by Patty Austin today. Patty Austin's new CD is called Sound Advice. So you can definitely uh, keep watching us and listening to us and we'll tell you as soon as it's available in stores. Uh, but you can get a sample on Black America Web and you can also check out her in studio jam. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Maura. I'm so fascinated. I'm Nikki Woods, <laughs> and we've gone beyond the studio with Patty Austin on blackamericaweb.com. Bye, Black America Web. <laughs>